Hello. Happy Saturday. How are you? How's it going? Are you guys uh, ready to continue the opium coat? I feel like the welt pockets went really good. I know we spent a lot of time on them the other day, but I think like for me, it's so good to like go through the process and be like, okay, um, how does this lo make you know logic sense to me? So that it's just like, no problem. Hi, Nicolene. How's it going? All right, so is this brightness okay? You guys keep telling me it's too bright and I feel like I can barely see what's on the screen. <laughs> so it's, and I tried to adjust my monitor, like maybe my monitor is really dim and it's all the way up. So <laughs> just tell me if you want more or less. So we're making the deer and doe opium coat and um, it has these origami well pocket detail. Hi Terry. Thank you for telling me that. Um, and let's see, where's, here's ours right here. So I hand stitched the um, ends right here after the stream. Okay, good. Hi, Beverly. Nice to see you. Um, I realized that it was going to be easier to have these top like stitched down before we got to the lining. So that's why I just did it. Plus, it's kind of a nice thing to do after the stream. Just sit there and kind of think about the garment, you know. Hi, Mullen. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're doing the Deer and Doe Opium Coat. Hearts Fabric sent us this. If you're interested in anything that um, you would like to buy with the Deer and Doe, we have a code for 10% off, and it's so, so 10. Um, and we're using the Brussels washer linen, which is really nice. It's just got a really nice, like, heft for a linen, and it has, like, great drape. And then we have a polyester lining with snails on it, which is really cute. You can see my little snails in there. <laughs> I like how from far away it looks like kind of elegant polka dots with their snails, you know. So we left off about to do the um, armhole and... Hi, Olivia. Nice to see you. Been a long time no see indeed. And you're on Twitch. You're kind of favoring that now, huh? That's awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. So if you're making this coat and you're kind of following along, let's see. We are on step three, the coat body. We did the center back seam. We did the side seams. And... Now it looks like we're constructing the sleeve and putting it on the armhole. We're going to do the belt loops and then we're going to go right into the notched collar. Um, and then we line it. I'm just kind of looking through here, right? Yeah. Easy peasy. Hey, Eliza. Hello, hello. All right, I'll leave this open here. So I think the next step is to... Um, Iron this, like it said to use an uh, interfacing tape to reinforce this armhole edge. And I just cut like a strip of interfacing and I'm just gonna iron it on. So I, I feel like, like someone said hem tape for interfacing tape, but hem tape is, isn't it double sided? I thought it was double sided. Am I wrong about that? I know you guys come to me because you think I'm an expert, but I'm obviously not an expert. <laughs> and I also don't buy everything there is. So I'm always like, can I do this without that? <laughs> you know, late night sewing, right? <laughs> that really gets us to the like, hey, do I really need that tool? So <laughs> hi, Frederica, how's it going? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times I just open streams and I just play them in the background. Sometimes I don't even say hi, but in some streams you can see who's watching. So I always say hi and I'm gonna be lurking if I can't like stay. So, but sometimes I just stay and watch and then yeah, stay as long as you want. All right, I'm gonna pop over to the iron and fumbly put this piece of interfacing tape in. So, let's see. I need to adjust my iron. I may need to like change the autofocus on it. I'm not sure. I think my iron's hot though. It's a gigantic armhole. Look at this huge armhole. Look at this thing. It's huge. 
I think I need some scissors too. Sort by <laughs> sewing is a contact sport. Uh oh, what happened? You finished the lace top and you finished the, the armhole sleeve. Trimmed it using the bias finding it looks good. Oh, nice. Nice. I know sometimes it's nice to um, those those clear tops just to bind them. So you put this on the, okay, look, I, I did, this is like a really weirdly cut. I know, I know. You're supposed to put it on the seam line. And I imagine it's because all this bias, your armhole would just get stretched out over time and you're putting it on the, the seam line, mine's pretty wide, so I'm just gonna put it up to the edge there since the seam allowance is only 3 8 of an inch. And then I'm going to clip it so I can kind of bend the curve like this and maybe a little more. I think you're just providing a little bit of stability stability for your armhole. I'm totally winging it. This is what it looks like when you wing it. <laughs> Stay there. There we go. Know what I mean, jelly beans? I'm not using comments and sitting at my actual sewing table and trying to sew on a chair near my bed. Oh, right, Federica. Oh my gosh, yeah. Ergonomics, right? I'm going to start trimming this the other direction now. That's why it's going to fall apart for a little bit. Like this. Yeah, I do that all the time, Federica. I want to like sit in bed and like look at my phone sometimes and oh my god, that just kills me. I don't know why I do it. I don't know why that sounds so cozy. Well, that's kind of bad there. Um, when it's only just as like uncomfortable, you know? I'm sorry. I know there's a ton of people watching us cringing while I do this. It's Saturday. Cut me some slack, all right? <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> exactly. Like they can smell you. Exactly. Yep. I know what you mean. Totally know what you mean. I always think it's funny. My dogs always want to be with me, but I'm kind of boring. I'm always doing stuff I have to do, you know? I don't know why they want to hang out with me. I wonder why, like, putting in a... I mean, I guess a stay stitch probably wouldn't be enough for this you know I this makes me think of that um, I when I watched that Angela Wolf um, tutorial on doing invisible zippers she had this little tip on like if this was a sheer fabric and you're like her tip is put interfacing um, on the a zipper opening but to use pinking shears for one edge of it, you know, so like you would pink one edge of it and then um, when you laid it down, like this would be the part on the inside of the garment. She says, if you're using sheer fabrics, then it won't show up. And this makes me kind of think of that. I'm not using sheer fabric, but I could see how like, worrying a little bit about getting a ridge. I need a weight over here. Eek! I'm losing my jacket. I'm losing it. Let's move this too. A ham should be enough if it were a real ham, right? <laughs> oh, really, Terry? Oh, let me show you mine. I have one of those. It's right here. I keep it handy. 
I used to use this as a prop. Look how dusty it is. Look, it's... It cost me a lot. I really wanted it. I thought it would hold a ball of yarn, and then look, there's a little cutter right here. And um, I ended up, it doesn't, it didn't hold a ball of yarn. Um, and uh, like this unscrews like this. And uh, I ended up using it only as a prop in Halloween pictures for chicken boots. And it would be the most annoying thing every year because all people would want to know is where I got it. <laughs> And if I was selling it, or how to buy that yarn holder in the picture, and I would just be like, oh my god, it's a prop. Since when did I make start making antique cast iron things? Sorry. No one really ever saw my grouchy customer side, but you guys are going to see it. <laughs> but you could use it at yours as a weight, couldn't you? I mean, mine literally is a paperweight right now, so it was kind of expensive for that, since it didn't end up doing what I'd hoped it'd do. Um, I'm wearing my uniform tunic dress today, and I kind of want to make another one, but as a tunic. Since, you know, fall. I need more tops, you guys. I'm wearing this sweater I knit. I knit it like the day it came out. And then after I was done, there was all this errata posted for it. It fits really terribly, but I love it. Yeah, right, Beverly? It does feel like you've done exercise. When um, we used to sew the project bags and pocket buckets, we didn't have to turn those right side out, but um, wrestling it to bind the edge. Rayanne, she worked out six days a week. She was really, really fit. And um, she even said, she goes, I, am, I get really sore. <laughs> When I sew this bag because um, I did the last step and so when I was teaching her how to do the last step she was like oof no wonder you got muscles I was like yeah that's right all right here we go we have our really badly interfaced armhole but no one's gonna see this except you guys my monitor on a like lazy season so I can turn it. Hi Ida. How are you? <laughs> you haven't missed much. I'm just, I, I just ironed a long strip on my armhole of interfacing. Ooh, there's a lot of jacket here. This fabric is so great. Okay, uh, so we're going to sew our sleeves now. These are the collars. Sleeve. Oh, I'm sorry. Just punched you guys. <laughs> um, good morning, Barbara. All right, this is collar facing facing. Do you ever look at your pile of um, pattern pieces left and you're like, "Oops, I forgot about that one." <laughs> That's happened to me so many times that now I look at the pile as I'm going to, so I don't have those kinds of surprises. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to, um, you know, miss a pattern piece sometimes. I just totally threw away a clover clip. And all I have on my garbage is Halloween wrappers. You literally just did that, Olivia, right? Yeah, I know. It's so funny. It's like kind of hard to do that because most of the time you need the pattern pieces. But um, yeah, I've definitely done it before. All right, so it's kind of hard to tell the right and the wrong side of this fabric. One side feels a little fuzzy or softer. It's not brushed or anything like that. Um, so I'm just trying to be consistent so I don't get two right sleeves. <laughs> Nobody wants two right sleeves, but it happens. I think one of you just said you did that. I felt, I really felt for you. 
All right, so if we do that one like this, so I just stack them up and these two like this, we will have two different sleeves, All right? So we're gonna do this long um, shoulder seam, essentially. Like we were talking about last time, how that this is a raglan, but also a two-piece sleeve. We don't change tonight, Malin. Um, oh boy, look at that. I have these wrong. We gotta do this over again. Um, we don't change time. Yeah, we call it fall back. They've been moving the, the chi time changes closer and closer together. And um, now it happens late, kind of after Halloween here. Halloween's kind of a big deal here. All right, let's look at the notches. That's a front. And this is the right side. This is a back. And this is the right side. I cannot make this mistake because I interfaced the hem. <laughs> yeah, right, Terry? It is infuriating. Okay, this is the front. Goes to that one. This is why it is kind of good if you do, like, I used to be kind of like, yeah, I'll do that step later. You know, like I'd cut out my pattern and um, I'd see, I'd like skip past all the information on all the um, like prep. And like this one has quite a bit of like interfacing that you need to um, iron on. And um, I did it all right before we started sewing and that's great because I don't even have to think about this now. All I have to pay attention to is that I get the right to the back to the front and then it'll take care of itself as far as having two sleeves because I interface the hems. So it's kind of nice that it's kind of like a gift to your future self, you know. Why does my machine sound funny? The seam, uh, the stitch is super short. So I went on a sew day again yesterday and I did, I was there in my idea, I was there all day. So I got there like, I was there from like 10.30 to four and I did maybe 10 squares. That's a long time. What a privileged craft we have, right? <laughs> and then I sat here this morning and I was looking them over. I'm like, all right, I have 29 squares. I have 10 more cutouts. So right now I have 39 squares. It'll take me a whole nother day to do 10 more squares. If I do it at my machine here, it'll be a lot faster if I'm not talking and stuff. I think I could do it in half the time. But I did the math, you guys, because I've been thinking, you know, I need twin duvet covers. I need two of them. So I'm like, this would be practical. I'll use these for my twin duvet covers. So I did the math, and I was trying to do it, and I was like, okay, if I add a lattice between them, and then I put a 12-inch border, you know, I'm not, like, accustomed to quilt math, but I can, you know, I drew a picture and all that. I would have needed 96 of those blocks. I was like, yep, that's not happening. <laughs> so, um... Now, I now know that um, I'm halfway with my blocks. I'm going to stick to the instructions and make the recommended size. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was like 96. Oh, man. What did you forget your pockets on, Olivia? Yeah, that's a, I, that's a good example. I have forgotten to do my pockets before. I'll see them in the pile of the cut things, and I'm like, oops. You know? I really need to have someone come and look at my machine. I don't like that it vibrates. And I saw a clip of the of one of my videos and I can see it vibrating. I don't know why that but doesn't bug you guys. It bugs me. My other machine doesn't vibrate at all. You know. All right. So is anyone doing the like Halloween costume scramble? So 
Oh, you know what? I would think I was supposed to do my, um, no, 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 it doesn't matter. I was just thinking I did this wrong, but no, nope. the Clio skirt. You can do inseam pockets instead though. Yeah, contrast pockets, yeah, totally. Yeah, and if you're worried about a little bit of it showing like the contrast doesn't really kind of work with whatever look you're going for, you could just put a little facing of fabric in the, the outside fabric on the bottom pocket. You know? I did this right, right? I sew both seams, right? <laughs> I'm just assuming. And then look, here's your armhole. Easy peasy. Yeah, like that's how I've gotten away with some of those where I'm like, oh, I... Uh, didn't really want it to show, you know, I don't mind contrast. Oh, okay, so the what they do here is they do the underarm of the sleeve, put the sleeve on the jacket, then do the shoulder seam. I'm doing, I just did it a little differently. So I'm gonna put the sleeve in as one. So there's no advantage to either way since it's raglan, it doesn't matter. I'm just trained to assemble the sleeve completely before I put it in a lot of times, so I didn't even think about it. So I got, uh, Ray gave us a message. She says she has pre-washed her, her shape flex. That's what this is, this interfacing is. Um, she's had trouble gluing it on her garments, but look at this. This, this is so nice. Like, it is seamless. Look at that. Like if that, if this were the other stuff that I usually use, you can bet I would have caught that edge and it would have peeled off a little bit, you know, unless I really ironed the heck out of it. Um, I haven't had trouble with this and I was wondering if maybe it can get old. Like maybe if it doesn't sell well in the store and it sits there or maybe temperature changes. I mean, I don't know. These are just ideas I'm throwing out there. Um, and she's also pre-washed it and... Um, she, the jury's out on that because the garment she put it on is a summer top. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. But um, I think whoever had the idea of doing like, like just soaking it, that might be a good idea. All right, so I just turned my sleeve right side out and now I'm looking for my notch. So there's my double notch and this is my back. So I can just put this in here. And raglans never have ease in them. They're very easy to set in. So I'm just gonna line up my underarm seam right there. So I think some of the details you could do on this coat, which would be kind of nice depending on your fabric, is um, top stitching all of the seams. Hi, Lisa. Um, so like before I put the, you know, my underarm seam in, like I could have nicely, like if I press this seam open, it's not gonna stay like that forever, right? Um, or you could top stitch it down, you could split the, open up the seam, stitch on both sides. It depends on the fabric look you're going for. You know, if you did like a four ounce denim, you could top stitch it all, it would look really nice, or, or like a lightweight canvas, even a wool, you could push it to one side. Um, the linen, I'm kind of going for easy breezy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going for that kind of, just kind of casual, because it's a like a, you know, washable linen, so. So because you interface one, the, just the, arm, the armhole and not the sleeve, I imagine that'll help hold the shape of the sleeve because it's attached to the side with the interfacing. I'm gonna try and line up that seam. I'm opening it up. So I, I have you guys ever seen TikTok videos? Hi Katie, how's it going? Happy Saturday. 
people um, I follow share them on like Twitter. And um, they're so funny. I decided to like look at the app and what a time suck. But it was really fun, really funny stuff. Quick, little quick short videos. I don't know, it was really fun. I wish you could post them on Instagram. I would love to make a sewing TikTok. <laughs> I'm trying to ease this in here. It is giving me a little bit of trouble. It's grown a little bit. Oof, I got it. All right, so we have one. We have a sleeve. So there's our... Yeah, see, like, I think, like, iron, ironing this, you know, top stitching it. Maybe I would top stitch this. Lennon gets top stitch. I'm not surprised, Lindsay. Welcome. Hi, Samia. Samia or Samaya? Am I saying it right? Welcome. Yeah, the, um, yeah, the, I could totally see <laughs> getting a little sucked into the TikTok thing. They're cute. Like I saw like firefighters doing them and policemen and movie stars, people with pets, dogs. Algeria, welcome. I'm in California. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like how Instagram is, you know, Instagram, right, Eliza? But it's more of like a really short video version. There's music, something like that, so. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. So I turned the sleeve right side out. I'm just putting the right sides together right now. And lining it up. It's pretty easy. That's what's great about raglan seams, right? There's not, or sleeves, they're not really any easing. So, yeah, there's, it's a, quite an international crowd here, Samia. It's really fun. What time is it in Algeria? We've, you know, we've kind of been international from the start, you know, so. And I don't know why that is. I, I love it, you know. That's exactly what I'm looking for. This is just bringing people together. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm glad you find them useful. What do you like to sew? We're, being, we're gonna be doing some kids clothes soon. I know Megan was like, kids. <laughs> so it's 7.30 p.m. there, right? All right, let's see here. Algeria is, which languages? I know French is one of them, of course. Um, I don't speak any of them. I've studied a lot of Spanish, some French, terrible French. I even took Italian shortly. It was so similar to Spanish, it was confusing. Everything, but not for men's. <laughs> we do a little men's wear, but not much. Mostly we're sewing women's clothing and um, I, I like making bags. Plus bags you don't have to fit, which is nice. Arabic and French, okay. I don't speak either. Sorry. I'm always impressed with people's English. And I definitely res respect people learning my language and thankful. All right, you guys, I can try it on. Should I try it on? So wingy. I could put it on over my sweater, which is nice. It could be almost a dress. Okay. I can't really tell what it looks like yet. Yes. Did I just move my machine? I did, didn't I? 
sorry, buddy. Sorry, Phoenix. There we go. Okay. Now we're doing the um, belt loops. That's what it is. I had to pin these. These are I, these are definitely a pattern piece I would forget. <laughs> and then we'd get to the end. I'd be like, oh, looks like I'm hand sewing those guys on. I was thinking I could um, turn these, <clears throat> sew these and turn these. I'm going to look at the directions. What is the seam allowance on these guys? Maybe you don't sew these right side together. In four lengthwise top stitch. Oh. Okay. Okay. So let's see. You fold it in four like this. I don't know about that. Um, I would really like this edge to be finished. So I think what I'm going to do is do more something like, let's see, like this and like this. Okay, so I'm going to fold it like this, like that. And then um, I'm going to fold this little edge over this one and then fold the whole thing in half and kind of try and get it lined up so I can edge stitch it. I don't want the, I want it to be completely all four layers edge to edge. So, oh, sorry, Eliza. Yeah, I think so, Eliza. I think it, when I see it in pictures, it does look a little oversized in a coat way, you know? Oh, fold both edges to the center and then into. Oh, yeah, I could do that too. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I didn't see your comment fast enough. I like this because all of the fabric is, um, it's the same throughout. You know? Could have told me I was crooked. Jeez, you guys. <laughs> All right, so, because when I do this, I can really get this, um, when I fold it like that, I can get the edges all lined up. And I don't fall short in there. Normally I would sew from this like same, I started here and I went here. I would do the same on this side, but um, it's so narrow. I'm having a little, I, you know, it's a little fiddly. And I don't find it stretching out. So I have the, there, there we go, right? Um, and now it says to serge or zigzag your ends. So, <laughs> not here about video blurry. <laughs> you might try pausing it. Can you pause it live? You can't pause live, can you? You can on Twitch. You might be able to pause it, let it catch up a little, and then do it, or refresh. All right, so I think, let's see. I think I'm just gonna stitch across these ends here. A few times. Like that. I don't have a zigzag on my machine. This does one stitch and one stitch only, and it goes forward and backward. That's it. Nothing else. No, no hidden stuff. I can make it automatic. I can do. I can do the back tacks automatic, but that's it. <laughs> it's the only other thing I can do. <laughs> and it clips threads. <laughs> that's why I have it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I have that. I get that issue too. All right. So um, there's a notch on the waist, um, and it's eight inches down. I actually looked at it right before the stream because I didn't see a notch on mine. 
So I wanted to make sure I had it. That's about right actually, eight inches. So we're doing obviously the belt closure, not the snap closure. So, um, and by belt closure, I mean that's it. There's no other um, devices, you know, there's no other closures on it. Pretty sure I looked looked through it and saw, oh, look at that, I got that really wrinkled right there. So let's open up this seam allowance here. I'm gonna, I, let's do, let's do some ordering, or ordering, I just saw Ray's. Hi, Ray! Um, let's do some ironing. <laughs> Yeah, Ray Ray, I don't know about that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of with that because this is, it's adheres so nice. <laughs> Have a good lunch. We're going to iron. Okay, I'm going to iron this a little bit. Has anyone ever taken apart a men's wear coat and seen the inside and how messy it looks? It's pretty cool. I guess what I'm talking about, like stitching, like I feel like it'd be a really nice detail. I'm kind of tempted to, you know, top stitches on either side. You could even do like contrast thread or push it one direction. It makes the ironing, like when you um, own it and you're washing it, the ironing, it, you wouldn't even have to iron it probably. You know? Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do that. Are you guys up for some watching a lot of top stitching? <laughs> It just takes a while, it's kind of why, you know, it's like you're, you're triple sewing it basically. You, what did you do? You took apart one, Terry? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat. The horse hair stuff's so interesting. I don't think it's made out of horse hair anymore. All right, so yeah, like top stitching this before I sewed it would have been smart, you know? What would I do? I think I would just push it towards the back and top stitch it down, you know? I bet I can do it though. I'm determined. I almost think one one top stitch on one side of the seam, like pushing the seam allowance one way and then top stitching it down would look more like how linen would be sewn. This is a long sleeve. They look funny at the front hem, Lisa. Ooh, how? Like, what does that mean? I'm curious. Oh, really, Terry? Oh, okay, that's interesting. I wonder if what I had was horse hair then. No, I, I mean, not me, I mean, uh, where I worked. She had some pretty traditional supplies. I doubt it. We lived in a town that there is a pretty high percentage of vegetarians and vegans and she'd probably want to respect that. And having two options is kind of hard for a really small fabric store when there's not a lot of people using it. All right. 
see that shoulder does this little curve right there. Might be something to consider for when you, if you fit yours, that um, you would want that little shoulder slope to be in the right spot on you. Because it's not like a typical shoulder line, you know, your cross shoulder measurement is going to be different with this. Yeah, that's true, Beverly. Like they were not pressed. Oh, like they weren't, oh, really? Huh. But you saw more than one like that, Lisa? I don't remember if I, I saw that. I think I was just looking at if a lot of people had made this and how the fit was on people and what fabrics they picked. I was looking to see if there was another lightweight one to kind of look at. Let's see what else do I want to press here. Um, I did that. Oh, I didn't do the sleeve underarm. And you know, I'm kind of thinking, I think, I think you're right, Beverly. I think maybe I'll push these seams actually toward the back instead. Because I don't want to get in there twice on that underarm. You know what I mean? But I didn't do that at the, I didn't do that at the underarm when I sewed it. But I could, I could actually pop these st this stitch out. See right here, I opened up my seam right here. So maybe I would have to pull that out. That's fast though. That's no big deal. a lot of coat. Yeah, see, I'll probably have to unpick that, but it's okay. You know, if you're going to make yourself a coat, do it the way you want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now is the time. Don't get impatient. Just chip away at it. I didn't really go back and look to see how long it took us to do that first welt. And like I was telling my husband, I'm like, yeah, I think I spent like an hour and a half on that one welt and then like three minutes on the next. It wasn't that long though, right, you guys? Like, <laughs> I'm exaggerating, right? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> the second one went so good. Yeah, I could, Beverly, but um, I'm kind of hoping I can just do it all one fell swoop. You know what I mean? It's going to be hard enough to get down here. Not impossible, though. We've done it on jeans when I've decided I'm going to top stitch both. And then we go do the whole darn thing, you know. They have fake horse hair. They, call, they still call it horse hair, Eliza. Um, and it's just not. But, like, if you if you look for tailoring supplies, they'll still call it that so I actually just assumed um, to be honest that they didn't have the real thing anymore I figured it existed somewhere but I wasn't sure how easy it would be to get a hold of it so I'll do the I mean even the center back seam I'm kind of loving the idea of just pushing it to one side and top stitching it down why am I doing the ham I don't need the ham now <laughs> I could pink it. Well, it's going to be lined, so I'm not worried about fraying. Not at all. Obviously, have you seen my pockets? Yowza. <laughs> Maybe pinking this right now would be a good idea. Should I go do that real quick? Let me go pink that. Wait, what am I going to do on the center back seam? Let's see. Where is it? Here it is. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Hi, Mo. That's right. Um, let me think about this. I'm going to press it that way. 
I'm going to just be consistent. I feel like when you put the stitching on either side, it's a specific type of look, and I don't think I want to go for that. I want something a little more relaxed looking. I don't really, I can't really put my finger on it. I'm not really an expert in that. I'm always astounded when people can like do one little thing to style an outfit to make it look the right decade, you know? And it's like, oh, I am so clueless about that. The, the lining is a um, snail print. Here's the lining. Let me go pink the um, pockets right now. Okay, I did I did kind of a quick quick rotary. Right. Top stitching in pink would be really cool. I like that idea. Um Hmm. Well, you know, this is a sponsored stream for a fabric store. I don't, I'm not sure I would take that liberty right now. <laughs> Yeah, they're not snail antlers, are they, Nancy? <laughs> All right, let's um, let's do a little bit of top stitching here. This jacket, man, it's big. This is the center back seam. I'm just gonna press it. The seam allowance is pretty narrow, so I'm just gonna center my foot right here over the seam. Why did I put it like this under here? All right, I need to pin these somewhere. So I don't lose them or throw them away, right? Because that's what I think I would do. I think I, they would throw, end up in my trash can by accident. I still gotta get that clover clip out of there later. Oh, this is the, <laughs> I thought this was the back seam. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought that was the back seam, all right. The heck? I haven't fixed this seam yet. I'm also going to take out the interfacing there. Whoops. Okay, so we're putting our own flavor on it, you know. Just cutting this, uh, sorry, the interfacing there, right here, and right there. And it's 
all going to be pressed this way. Do our other one right now. You know, it's easy. It makes this easy. Is that uh, usually when you sew in a sleeve, you do the um, you start and stop at that the spot. So there's no um there's none of that because we started at the armhole you pause to see <laughs> what ow <laughs> you guys see that's how we get you in here nancy we pull out the seam ripper you you made it just in time maybe you summoned the seam ripper you're vacuuming you <laughs> All right, so here we go. There we go. All right, so it's going to be uh, interesting doing that underarm for sure. I'm going to take this out right here. I didn't get this. Look at that. I did a pretty bad job right there. So let's just take this out. I should have put, I actually should have figured out where that eight inch mark was. And then I could have put my back stitch under the belt loop. Something to think about, you know, <laughs> you're bad. <at> sewing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all you, Nancy. You're the only reason I use my seam bird now. <laughs> I could have just taken this little section out, but because we're already going to have a, a, a back stitch right there, I might as well just back it all the way up, get a clean start, you know. On this kind of fabric, it's not as noticeable anyway, but still. it's. I always think about it, something to think, keep in the back of your head. I feel like your eye goes to where you back tacked, so I'm always trying to minimize where you see those. Okay. Let's pull my seam open a little better this time. I wish I would have put this on the other side of my machine head though. Okay, here we go. the fun part. You guys see okay? Dark! So dark. Almost there. No problem. Let's do our other one. This is our store. Our, okay, that's our side seam. This is our center back seam. Store center back seam. I'm gonna do it from the top down. Yeah, I think these pocket look. These look. These welts look pretty good. They turned out really good. They're fun. get it going a little bit and then I'm just gonna put my whole jacket on the table so it's not pulling you know I'm trying to keep it like this because I don't know do you notice some of the top stitching looks like the linens kind of pulling a little bit linen is a uh, open weave so it it does do that Ooh, I think I just ran out of bobbin thread yeah of course I ran out of bobbin thread yep 
Sometimes it's obvious. Yeah, you know, are you saying impressive because I got through the armhole? I mean, I always like avoid doing that. And then when I have to do it, I'm like, oh, that's not that bad. It's awkward, but it's, it's funny how I'll make it bigger in my um, head than it really is, you know? I need to get better about blowing out my bobbin case. Because I usually, I have to do this usually after every bobbin change just to, just to keep my machine as clean as possible. Um, and I definitely don't do it as much because most of my bobbin changes are happening on camera now. So. What the heck? Okay. Sorry, guys. I just realized I had my foot on the presser, the foot pedal, and I got a little nervous. So I was like, yeah, you gotta take your foot off the foot pedal. <laughs> I mean, even if your hands aren't on the top where the um, needle is, it, it you still, like, I don't know if you've ever had your hand under, well, you don't have an industrial machine most likely, but um, you definitely don't want your hand under the machine if you start it near the bobbin case. <laughs> Let's get rid of this little spot right here where my, I ran out of bobbin. Tension's all off. This thread matches almost too good. It's hard to see. What the heck? I can't grab it. It's too tight. At least we knew we ran out, right? That way um, we didn't so do the whole top stitching and then find out later. There we go. All right. I'm glad we're top stitching this. It'll look um, more coatish, you know? You know what I mean? narrow right there but I think I'm letting it go all right so now we're gonna do this side seam here we won't really have to do any other um, once we do all our seams here I didn't top stitch the well even though that is in the instruction because I, I felt like it looked better with the hand sewing you know I, I don't know why I can definitely be one of those people that over top stitches things. I really love it. I didn't get my juncture perfect on either side, but I wasn't going to fuss with that, you know. It's the underarm. Can you imagine this like in red wool, <laughs> like little red riding hood? Put a little hood on it <laughs> or a big hood on it. Okay. Uh, this just leaves the um, shoulder seam right here. So let's see, how are we gonna do that? I think I'm gonna leave it, um, the coats, this is right side out, but the sleeve is on the inside of the garment. I think I'm gonna try it this way. I think this will be the easiest. Let's 
see. You could do this one. You could do this one if you follow the instructions be, um, before you put the underarm seam, it'll be easier. Hi, Walter. <laughs> Thanks for your um, Patreon subscription. Hi, Megan. I'll be sending the um, pin cushion pattern to all of you who signed up this week and donated and stuff um, after today's stream to look for it. And I think I'm gonna modify the file to where you don't have to download the video at all. It's just a link, you know? I think that's cleaner. And I'm gonna look into putting it in the Adobe thing, the PDF, so. It's not even an Adobe file. Okay, I'm having a little trouble keeping straighter on this one because that curve kind of, I forgot about it. Just so you guys know. Oh, I'm not near the fires, Megan. Brooke kind of is. That's why I was asking her the other day, but she never replied. Um, they are uh, in LA area and north of San Francisco, kind of in Sonoma County. Um, I am not near there. That's about three hours from here. We are in uh, the, we are in the like power off outage areas, but my area obviously is not my like spot. Yeah, it wouldn't download for you, Melinda. Okay, cool. Did you see, yeah, so the whole, yeah, see, I don't understand this. Like, why would they make that the default then, you know? Like, they make it feel, they made me feel like that is standard. Like, oh, yeah, you can do that. And I was thinking, I don't think I've ever, well, I guess I've never bought something that comes with a video, so. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, you hear often like, what could there be left to burn in California? It's a huge state. <laughs> the fires are not near me. Oh, thanks, Walter. I'm glad. Um, the fires are not near me. Um, we are in a high risk fire area, but you know, most of California is, so. It's something on our minds all the time. <laughs> I know people that are in this area that had that power outage recently for like five days. And um, it was kind of funny because the woman was, it was her friend. I didn't know the woman talking very well and it was her friend. And um, they were, I think, slated to have another power outage right now. And her husband's like, you cooking dinner? And she's like, well, how am I going to do the dishes? Like, they literally keep, they fill their bathtub with water so they can flush their toilet. And then, um, you know, like washing dishes becomes a problem. Probably because they're on a, because um, they're a little bit rural. They're just north of town. So they must have a pump for their water. They're probably on a well. So, you know. So what about the armhole, you guys? I think I should do the armhole too. I didn't press that seam allowance though. What do you think? So I just did this uh, shoulder seam right here. So that, can you see it? Kinda. Yeah. Are you Barbara? Yeah. Um, I didn't do this one yet. Oh yeah, I did do that one. Okay, I've done them both now. So I didn't do the armhole. I don't know. How do I feel about doing the armhole? Oh, you're in the valley south of Fresno. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Chico would ever... I mean, you know, of course. But um, I don't know. Like, I think about that. Like, I'm in a big, big town, but we're surrounded by rural. Like, we're in the middle of, like, it's an agricultural area. Orchards every, you know, and then the... Sierra Nevada's kind of go straight up from our valley. Um, it isn't a, it's a coat. It's the opium coat, Nancy. 
but it's in linen, so that's why I'm kind of um, top stitching it. It was, you know, looking a little too floppy, <laughs> casual. You do the armhole for a sportier look. I was just thinking more just for ease of ironing and maintenance, you know? So would I, I think I would press the, like normally you press your seam allowance towards the armhole. And that's how it is right now. Shall we? Uh, it's like a swing coat. Let's do it. We are top stitching the heck out of this thing. I will say because of the narrow seam allowance, I'm having to kind of top stitch narrower. I'm not feeling very accurate about my top stitching and um, the seam keeps pressing my push presser foot away. Like I should, I don't have another presser foot that would work for this. All I have is a really narrow one for like a so-called zipper foot. What is this thread right here? What is this thread right here? See, so when I when I top stitch through this under on uh, side seam right here, the underarm seam side seam, my juncture where my sleeve met my body wasn't quite straight. But because I did the top stitching, it kind of gives the illusion that it, I got it perfectly matched up. Oh yeah, I could see that, Nancy. I think it would be cute on you though. But it is kind of full. It's like a full coat, very swingy. If you look at the hashtag we will get back to constructing this coat after one more armhole <laughs> I think this is a good touch though it's gonna be a lot easier to wash and wear I know it's gonna be hanging in the fabric store for a while but I'm sure someday someone will end up with it and it doesn't really look sporty it just looks like I don't know Higher value is what I would probably say because, you know, you put all this effort into the top stitching. All right, one more armhole. And then we're going to be doing the um, collar, pretty sure. We're going to do the belt loops. We're not going to forget those, right, Olivia? And then we're going to do the collar. Right now, like, see, it's, press, it's pushing my, my presser foot off. So if you're going to enter yours in the fair, you might want to... Make sure yours is top stitch a little bit nice. Yeah, looks more luxe, exactly. I'm gonna turn the sleeve right side. I thought I had it out right side out, sorry. These are all snail lining bits, leaving their snail trail all over my jacket. Do you ever like come to a project you haven't seen for a little while, like even if it was a year, you know, up to a year, and um, you, ha you didn't finish it, but then when you start working on it or ironing a part of it, it reminds you of what you were doing in that mo moment. Bye, Nancy. Um, when um, after the stream on Thursday, I usually like eat my lunch, go over whatever we sewed, make sure I'm ready for the next thing because it's fresh in my mind, you know. And I decided, oh, I do kind of need to hand sew this, you know, um, so that it's the hand sew the welt pockets down so that we don't have to worry about that um, when we get to the lining. And so I sat there and I put on something on HBO, like something called, like, it was about Catherine the Great. <laughs> and um, that's what I, I kept, when I started ironing the welt today, I was like, oh yeah, Catherine the Great. And the movie, the video stopped playing, so I never finished it. So, all right, let me get rid of this. Is where my bobbin ran out. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, I'm. It, it feels a little more duster coat right now because of all the top stitching. But I, I'm kind of, I kind of like that idea. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't do any top stitching here because it just looks kind of like it came out of the jacket, you know. All right, so let's put on the belt loops. Let's find our eight inches again. Those pins are long gone, no idea where they went. Uh, 
That was a lifetime ago, apparently. It was all for the belt loops that I decided to top stitch this garment. <laughs> I was like, oh, I need to press these seams. Yeah, classy is a good, yeah. I think it'll be nice. I think too, like it'll, it makes it easier to care for. It feels a little more stout too, you know, like kind of sturdy. All right, so let's put the coat up here. I don't wanna lose my pins this time. Who knows where those went. All right, so I didn't zigzag or surge across these, but I was just trying to think of a creative way to maybe finish them. Like, could I do, could I sew it down like this and then up like this and then down? That would enclose it. Is that overkill? Because look at this, when you just stitch it down like this, like stitch right there, fold it and stitch it. I feel like that little raw edge showing is, less than desirable, you know? So let's see, how wide is this belt? We cut four of these, so the belt is, the belt, you know, let's get rid of like three quarters of an inch, is like that. So I really don't have much room to play around with uh, turning under that edge, so. We're just gonna turn it under and top stitch it down as really close to the cut edge as possible. You know, I must stitch through all thicknesses like that. Now, do you guys line up your thing over the seam or I kinda wanna line it up with the seam like that? But does that look crooked? You see that? So, you know, like, do I put the belt loop over the seam? I could put it in front of the seam. I kind of want to line it up like that. You know, so it's continuous rather than interrupting it. Probably doesn't matter, huh? The belt will hide that edge. That's true. That's a good point. I'm gonna. I'll, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna center it. The last one. What was the last one? Like this. Lined up or centered. Lined up or centered. Yeah, I know, right, Walter? That's what I'm thinking, too. It's like you put all this effort into it, you kind of want it nice, in line. Yeah, it makes me kind of want to sit there and go, <laughs> like, ooh, could I have just sewn those so that they were tucked in? You know? Why couldn't you do that? Why couldn't you make this so that the edge is just finished and it's not a raw edge at all? Here we go again. Um, let me just cut these out real quick, okay? I'll, I'll do it on the iron table. I gotta get a piece of fabric though. Because I have the little pattern piece. I tucked it in just a second ago. Where was it? I was worried about losing it. Here it is. Okay. So if we finish the edge, we we could actually just top stitch the edge down. You know what I mean? 
I'm gonna give myself a little more. I, I can trim it off if I want. Ooh, oops. <laughs> Okay. So I, I gave myself like a little bit more, right? You know what I mean? Like, what if I... Actually, I have an idea. Well, I was gonna do that, Lisa, but um, I could do that and then just fold it in half. Um, I was just thinking just now what I could do is fold this up, fold this up. And then do just what I did before. You know? But Lisa, you know, I, what I could do is I could sew, cross this end up to here, cross this end here up to here, turn it right side out, and then fold it in half, top stitch it down, and it would be fully finished as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, Barbara. That's exactly what I was thinking too. Yeah, then turn. It has to be doubled. This way it would be a little, I think, faster if I just fold it and do it. What do we want to do? What do we want to try? How about we try both? Let's try both. We'll try and make them look as the same as possible to each other. Let's see what the difference is. Okay. This is turning on, right? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna line this up edge like this. And like this. All right. You know I'm all about less fiddly, right? See like that. Okay, and then I can stitch that. And then look at that, I have a finished edge and I can just top stitch it down, right? But let's try the other way too. We have all the time in the world. <laughs> so let's try this way. And then I'm just gonna look at like this little thread poking out. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna pull that in. Cause that's literally the raw edge like trying to creep out. And I, I just, I'm not having it, <laughs> you know? If I start pulling on it, I may have some problems. I'm gonna start, um, I'm gonna start sewing this. I, I might start in the middle and just hope it doesn't come undone. And then when I get to this end, I'm gonna poke this in here. Poke, poke. All right. It was kind of pushing my top layer so then they didn't line up as well. I'm just gonna go all the way around. Eh. Okay, here's one. No, I, I got a little bit of a corner happening here. 
There's one. Okay, so let's try this other idea. I'm gonna do a really narrow seam allowance because the way I'm looking at this is this seam allowance right here is that edge that I folded under on this one. So I basically only have that three eighths of an inch. So I have an eighth and a half and an eighth and a half for my seam allowance on this. Unless I'm doing the math wrong, but I'm pretty sure so that these would be the same width as each other. I'm trying to use two different methods and get the same result. <laughs> so now I need to trim these little corners here to make it turn well. Okay, got my trusty chopstick. I think the loop turner is a little overkill for this because it's just this little tiny guy. You only have to do two belt loops, so, you know, why not have fun with it? All right, now I'll use my awl to get the corners. So now what I'm trying to do is when this folds in half, it should be the same width as that one. I'm a little nervous about that. But I don't have to worry about finishing that opening at all because it's gonna get it's going to get folded um, in there. Now, if you did both this way, you wouldn't have to worry so much about them being symmetrical as long as you sewed them the same. Go over. Sorry, you mean me. So let's see, there's my... Okay. My points are a little <laughs> soft. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna iron this because the other one got ironed before I sewed it, which kind of, you know, changes it, right? So let's just iron it real quick. That way it has all the same benefits as the other one did. No, it already looks a little different. Ah, okay. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start in the middle. Oh, this isn't getting folded in the center. All right, so. But this little edge right here is gonna get now shut while I top stitch it all together. No one will ever know that it was open. Okay. Ooh, I missed. Okay. I think the underside looks a little better. It's longer. <laughs> what the heck? How'd that happen? I like this one better. It's flatter and filled up better. This one's longer because my idea was I would just top stitch the end down. 
I just want to cut it off. <laughs> what the heck? Um, but you know what I could do is fold under an edge, you know? I was worried about the, the seam allowance and the width, um, and I didn't realize I needed to worry about the ends because I thought that, like, when I did that little seam before I turned it, that was about what I folded up. I guess not. All right, so can I get this apart? I can't even see this. Let's do it this way. I can't even see it. I'm just hoping I'm not cutting the linen. I'm glad I didn't do my start and stops on the ends now. Okay, so let's get rid of this. See, I do these weird little experiments. That way, you know, those, those people that are sewing this at home, they can get caught up and pass me. <laughs> um, I do because um, I'm just thinking like, you know, you know, that um, when I sew jeans, I always talk about like the belt loops and I really hate it when my belt loops fray from the inside of the belt loop and those little threads stick out. It's annoying, you know? And I feel like this way, you can just top stitch this down now. You don't need to um, turn it under and then there would be nothing fraying. So, I don't know. Okay, so I just wanna like do this, I guess. I don't really want to. Alright, so we're just going to turn this under like this. It's going to be a little thicker, but I don't think it's going to, it's going to show. Or I just sew another one. It doesn't even want to go in there. You know? Sloppy belt loops, yeah. Totally. I mean, I'm not a tailor, but forgive me while I obsess about bell loops. <laughs> if I could come up with enough experiments to do, I would have a so uh, an experiment stream. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think like Either method works great. It's just what you, how you, uh, they look, they look on, in person. I know it's probably really hard to see. This one that I'm fiddling with was the one that I sewed, turned right side out and folded it. Trash this one. I was about to cut it, tuck it in and just edge stitch it. Like I can totally go cut another one, but it's like six and one half a dozen of the other at this point. Um, so I would just pick the one you like. So I'm just going to cut this off. No do over. Fine. <laughs> I think you're right. It'll be a lot easier. <laughs> Let's throw away all these books. I have one belt loop. <laughs> okay, okay. Oops, not that one. This one. I better cut it the same size. Right in the middle. <laughs> This is what I did, right? I did this. OK. 
Okay. I'm doing this the same way, right? No, 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 no. Like this, like this. This is what I did. Uh, your idea totally worked. It just didn't end up being the same size. That's all. So as long as I would have done that way twice or this way twice, it would have been fine. They look almost identical. You couldn't tell them apart. It'd be fine. I think that way works great. You know, it's like, that's why I say do the one that like makes sense to you. Because for some reason, this origami folding made sense to me. <laughs> But other people might feel less, um, it might, might, that might feel fiddly to them. Whereas the other way is a little more concrete because it's like, okay, I just sew and turn this, you know. Oh, I'm just going to trim this little thread. Linen, yo. All Okay, and get rid of that one too. It's just too fiddly to deal with. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> oh, exactly, Walter. I just realized maybe I should check. <laughs> it just occurred to me. I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> but this is the way I did the other one. So I, that's why I was like, okay, I'm pretty confident, but. That was pretty quick. <laughs> okay. We got belt loops. <laughs> All right. And I think you guys voted to put them on in line. So we just top stitch it down now. Just pick the one you like the best. I like I like actually the bobbin side of this one. So I'm gonna just stitch it down. Make sure I don't stitch it to the any other part of the coat. <laughs> this might be a good opportunity to zigzag, like do a bar tack, you know? That was awesome. <laughs> Flat, right? I always want to go like this. I'm going to do a little bit. It's easier to get your belt through, you know? All right, one more. Now I have that pin there, but really at this point, I don't really care about if it's eight inches down or not. I care of that they match, <laughs> you know? It's more important to me now. And this is the back. So I can put, let's see, this side looks better and this end looks better at the top. Just like that. Wish I could uh, cover up that top stitch right there. It's nowhere near a quarter inch away from my seam. What the heck? Oh, I could get that a little closer. And I'll do a little bit of this, raising it up. I'm going to move that one over just a tad. You know, after all that, might as well make sure. I kind of felt when I was doing it from this side that I wasn't going to be able to see if I was lining it up well enough, and I was right. I should have trusted my instincts, turned the coat around. OK. 
Okay. So, Malin is... I, if, if you're, are you still here, Malin? Is it really your time change tonight? So, what does that mean, like... It's so weird that we do it, isn't it? The time change. Okay. That, the sewing fairy wasn't trying to tell me something there, right? Like, oh, you didn't get that lined up because you did something else wrong. Right? Okay. So I, I'm not really like making it stick up very much. I'm just doing a tiny little bit. So, <laughs> Nancy had to go. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit like that. I can see now better that I've lined it up with the side seams. I don't want my needle to fall off the edge very much because, um, especially with this lightweight like fabric, if I have a stitch on the body, it'll end up pulling the body a little bit when any time this gets pulled, you know, so. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I feel like ours is in November now. I feel like when I was a kid, am I wrong? When I was a kid, the time change happened before Halloween, so it would be dark enough to trick or treat. Now it's the opposite. People don't want their kids going, like little kids going out in the dark, you know? Yeah, I know, Malin, right? They've been, we've been, so called discussing it for years here too. And there's a plan in place that nobody really knows about. So where are we now? Okay, I think we're doing the collar. So I'm gonna get the under collar out, which is right here. I'm not supposed to interface this, right? Um, and let me look and see how the directions tell you guys to do it. So I do it the same way, um, just in case, okay? Because I would put the collar to the coat first and then the other collar to that collar and then I do the facing, I think, is how not to call it. These collars always confuse me. Our time change is November 3rd. Oh, okay. Um, do you guys remember, were any of you here when I, when I sewed um, the Caroline pajama top? Okay, so the week before, I had made the Rita shirt dress by Named Clothing, a great pattern by the way, and it has a notched collar like this. And, um, and notched collars usually mean like when you turn it back, you know, the whole lapel, there's a lapel and you know, he turns back, right? So um, I sewed that and I was like, oh yeah, this is how I do this. And then, um, the next week, I was like, you know, I'm going to make the Rita shirt dress into a pajama top. That's what it was. That's, it wasn't the Caroline pajama top. And I was, I literally had just sewn it days before, and I could not remember how to put that collar together for the life of me. You guys were all laughing at me. This was the first time you guys laughed at me. <laughs> oh, see, now I have this whole thing. Okay, yeah, that's interface. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. I got a little nervous there. All right, so this is the under collar and the um, interfacing is on the roll right here, which when I cut this out on the cutting stream, I thought that the, all the interfacing went up here because of the way this pattern was marked. This was a traced copy of a pattern, so I think it was just I misinterpreted what was above the roll line. So it actually goes below. Depends on what you consider above or below, but it goes on this little narrow part here which is essentially creating like a collar stand, you know, like, a, like an archer, or like an archer button up, like Oxford or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna do that center back seam here. Um, kind of tempted to top stitch it since we're in a top stitching frenzy right now, right? Pin the under collar to the coat. And you do it at the roll line like that. Turn the top seam on, it's not the bottom one. Trim the top one. So trim the coat seam allowance, notch the, wait, trim the collar seam allowance, notch the, the coat. Stitch the front facing to the back facing. Sew the upper collar to the facing as in step four two, okay. 
Oh, okay, okay. All right, so we're gonna do this. And it goes. But this goes between, um, they don't really illustrate that this goes into the under collar with the dots on the lapel. All right, so let's get our pattern piece out and determine where the dots on the lapel are. Here's the lapel right here, right? And there are dots, apparently. Let's hope they're there. Pocket, back, front. Okay, good, there they are. So here's a dot right here. We're gonna mark that on the lapel. And I'm just gonna notch it. That's fine, I just need a notch. Let's do the other side. Yeah, right, Eliza, I know. My daughter, I think I mentioned this, she's really into watching Sunset. And, um, you know, before she would be like, oh, I'm gonna go watch Sunset, and be like <laughs> 8.30 at night. And now she's like, can I eat dinner afterward because I'm gonna miss sunset. And she's like jetting out the door when we're, she's like she's leaving before we get home from work. <laughs> and it's kind of a bummer, you know, like it's gonna get really hard for her to make it. Okay, so you go all the way to this um, curved edge here and you stop, it says five eighths of an inch away from the edge here. The ends of the under collar with the dots on the lapel. All right, so apparently that's what you're doing. Here's my dot. Here's the end. Let's hope that's what they mean, not the seam line, right? And I'm gonna sew this. Wait, I'm gonna start more like right here, about five eighths of an inch away. Um, you're gonna not line up your center with your center. Ooh boy. That looks really far away. <laughs> Can we do it? Oh my goodness. Uh, I feel like this uh, neckline would really benefit from some stay stitching. Just saying. Let's see here. Can I do that? Holy heck. Let's see. Really? Wish me luck. Let's see if we can do this. Now, because this edge has been interfaced, it, it definitely, you know, brings it in a little. So here's my non-negotiable point right here. And then I'm gonna um, pin this right here, so this is the center of my collar and the center back seam. So I'm just gonna open it up and pin it like this. And now I put my hand under here like this and I kind of try and adjust this the best I can to kind of ease it in. You, If you really get desperate, I remember used to having a lot of trouble getting collars to get in without like, like little puckers. You could um, run a stitch along your neckline of your coat and then draw it up a little bit. Don't get gathers in it, kind of like when you ease a sleeve in. Draw it up a little bit to fit. It might help. It'll stabilize your neckline a little bit. I think I got it. I don't think I got any tucks, but we'll see in a second. All right, so I'm lining up my edge of my collar to that dot. This is my next non negotiable and I have to get all this in there. So I'm kind of keeping this really relaxed, the coat neckline edge really relaxed and kind of pushing it towards the machine a little bit. Um, and then I'm pulling on the collar. I'm actually pulling it, kind of stretching it a little bit. Mainly because the interfacing has kind of made it, you know, cinch in a little bit. But the uh, this interfacing is really great for this, honestly. 
All right, so let's just walk it along. Let's see, what am I up against here? Okay, so I just need to stretch it a little bit. You can draw on your neckline or, st or stretch it a little bit. I'm not really stretching it. I'm just making sure that I'm getting this edge to line up. I'm not stretching it out. Because of the curve, it's actually going to go in there. The curve is helping. There's a little bit of distance there. All right, and then you stop your stitching five eighths of an inch away. Like that. All right. Well, let's see how I did. I got it. Okay, so now we're going to put our front facings to our um, back facings. Front facing. So this I use not the so the shape flex. I use the stuff I have. So it's a little different. It's a little sturdier. Here's my other collar. So you're gonna do your shoulders of your facing. I still need to figure out where I'm gonna put my label. I can just put it, I don't know. I kinda of wanna put it lower down here maybe. I think lower would be better. My face doesn't seem kind of going with the uh, classy nature. <laughs> Oh yeah, do pins. The pins pins are great. Yeah, if you need pins, use pins. I, I may have been going that route if it didn't go so well. I'm just gonna tack this so I don't forget it. It's double sided. So shoulder seams of your facing. one. Here's my other. All right, and then uh, I think you put this onto your other collar. Same thing as far as like the dot goes. Um, but I'm gonna look for this. Well, let's see. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same dot. You know? Oh yeah, I have a. Oh no, I don't. Never mind. I thought I had a notch there. I don't. <laughs> Wishful thinking. I it's I, I know I'm really bad about notching my patterns as I cut things out, and it's really because I don't like extra notches, and I also think like um, I don't know why it's there, so I don't put it in. You know, so. Yeah, I mean, pins are fine. You can use pins. I find now I'm to a point where it's, I feel more comfortable without them when I need to ease things. <laughs> but there's times where I pin the heck out of things. Like I pin it every like eighth of an inch, you know, because I want to get it in there and I have to worry about other things. So whatever it takes. All right, so let's try it again. Let's see if I'm lucky again because this neckline is actually, um, I'm gonna do it the same way. They say to do it the same as in step four two, which was the what we just did. I haven't trimmed or notched my neckline yet there, you know? Sorry, this is when I'm like, yeah, you're right, right. Um, but yeah, it does show the stitching stopping Turn it on the notch, the bottom one. Press the seam open. What are those notches right there? Oh, they must be on the pattern. Okay. So I stopped. I started five eighths of an inch away from this little angled edge there. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna open up my seam allowances on the shoulders. And I'm gonna mark my center back neck. I can't believe I didn't do that. 
Because even if there's not a notch, I usually always mark my center center pieces like this. And you're going to need one on the bottom as well for the interfacing. I know the interfacing will sew to this edge right here. Logic dictates. So we'll just do that. All right. So this is a long piece. So now we have our non-negotiable spot. Um, do we really not have this notched either? What the heck? This isn't notched. <laughs> okay. Let's line up our centers. Because we're like, yo, you have to meet up. You guys are buddies forever and ever. That's how it's going to be. Eek. Okay. I don't know if I can do it. Let's see. Look at all that. There's no way. I can't do that. <laughs> Look at how much that is. Why? Why is that so hard? All right, so if this one's here. And This one looks easier, doesn't it? I'm going to take it out. We're going to start it again. Both these edges are interfaced, so it might be a lot harder to do the interfacing one. I need to start. Well, you know, I don't actually want to. Like, I could have looked up. Yeah, right? Yikes. Hi, Jan. <laughs> um... I could have looked up the pattern and seen if anyone wrote any. Like, I love Ravelry for that, right? People are like, I had trouble in this spot, just like everyone else said. And you're like, oh, okay, good to know, you know. All right, let's look at this again. Now, if this edge were kind of notched, clipped, you know, it would be a little easier. But I, I don't like sewing a pre-clipped edge. It, it's scary to me because you might not get the all the notches only in the seam allowance. Oh, I'm sorry you have a terrible headache. That's a bummer. Yeah, Terry, I don't have problems with sleeves, but suit coats have a lot of ease in the sleeves. Did you ever measure the difference to see on the seam line what the what the amount of ease was that you did? I'm curious. Wonder what the standard is in menswear. All right, let's try again. Okay. Like I've drafted this pattern before and I don't know why there would be ease. <laughs> And remember if there is or not like I'm not saying it's incorrect I'm just saying like is there ease in this when you draft one of these patterns I can't remember and but if there is why <laughs> you know that's what I'm wondering right now it must be a fit thing okay this feels a little better probably looks terrible but I'm gonna make it don't you dare come out don't oh oh no you slipped no, I can't make that. All right, where's the pattern piece? Front sleeve, back sleeve, front facing. Yeah, that's in the same spot. Hmm. Hmm. Doesn't this one look less? Yeah. 
Yeah, right, Eliza? That's exactly what I think. Yeah, right? Exactly, Walter. No, it's the right piece. I feel like this inner, I mean, part of it is that, yeah, both these edges are interfaced. <laughs> You're in the edge of your seat. Okay, so this is what's going through my head, you guys. Um, I'm using two pieces, sewing them together. They each have a different interfacing on them. And this one may have taken more heat than the other one. I can't remember which one took more heat. Like, like I sat there pressing it. So maybe it shrank a little. The other thing is, um, this is a traced copy of a pattern, right? So even if they trace it really well, um, there could be an error in the pattern. I don't know. I don't have it to check. But, you know, tracing sometimes, you know, even if you're just like, Tracing it, you think you're really accurate. If you add an eighth of an inch to each side, or an eighth of an inch to one piece, and then I cut two, that's a quarter of an inch right there, right? So it adds up quick. So um, my, I said, I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop sewing right there. I'm going to add a, a ease stitch on this piece. See if that works for the other half, and then I'll go back and do that for the other. Half. So that's my plan right now. You know, it is it is like October, right? You need a, a horror flick, right? <laughs> I'm not worried about it, just so you guys know. So I'm just I just put in a little bit of a a longer length stitch. I'm gonna do this just on the one side. And I'm gonna go a little past it. Um like this. And now, now, this is gonna be a little tricky to pull up because it's interfaced, you know? So we're gonna distribute. So it's like we're easing a sleeve on. Now, the, because the instructions don't say you're gonna have to ease this, that's what makes me a little bit like, ooh, is this the right, maybe just the wrong size was traced? You know, it happens. So, like I said, I'm just not worried about it. One of the things I can do to check, because maybe you're thinking, well, shoot, well, how are you ever going to find that out? You don't have the pattern pieces, and you don't want to really wait till someone sends them to you, right? But what I can do is look at the facing on top of the coat and see if it's the same. All right, so I just added um, a gathering stitch to my neckline right here. So I pulled it up, so now I have all these little puckers. If I sew right on the seam line, I'm not really gonna get those puckers. And those will probably, like once the seam allowance is clipped and it's in, it pushed into the neck edge, it's gonna kind of fill out those little puckers and kind of relax them a little bit. Remember, this is the facing edge too, so it's not really showing on the outside. So, so let's see if this works better. And um, also, I'm a fan of putting the side you're easing on top. <laughs> And we've been doing it on the bottom. All right. Did I just do the reverse? What was I stretching? I was stretching this. I was stretching this to make it into this. Yeah. I did it okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's put our seam allowance back. All right, let's, let's walk it. Okay, so here's my non-negotiable spot right here. They don't want to be friends. Look at that, it's gonna be a piece of cake now. In fact, I may have too many gathers. <laughs> But I'm not having to um, do anything now. It's pretty easy. <laughs> I'm pulling the collar a little bit. And I'm trying to stitch like right up against this gathering stitch um, on the left of it so that it's in the seam allowance. There we go. How you did it. 
That's how you do it. Okay, so let's see how it looks. See, that's not bad. No tucks. So we'll just pull out a little bit of this and add a gathering stitch. No problem. I mean, it was a problem. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys. I mean, you know, like there's probably experts out there that'd be like, no, no, no. But I'm here to tell you, it, you know, there's certain things you don't want to do and certain things that are okay. And this is okay. As long as I'm not like accidentally sewing a much larger facing to the um, coat, you know, that's kind of out of my control right now. I'm not sure. Um, and if when we go to sew our facings to the coat and we see that maybe that is the case, um, we'll, we'll be able to make adjustments. I'm your hero. <laughs> Not a euro. I've put my pair, fair share of tucks into things. <laughs> oh, Ray, really? They did? Yeah, you know, I a lot of people do that. They do pre-snip their edges, and um, I just don't feel confident enough with that. <laughs> then you search the open. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that makes me nervous. I don't feel like I'm I'm good enough. I mean, like. You guys see me clip. I'm like willy nilly clipping, you know, like I'm a little like kind of <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, you know, I can't imagine like pre clipping and then having to sew around it. I'd be like, oh, shoot, who clipped this? Oh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> All right, let's put this back in and put my stitch length longer and then um, this is dead. Yeah. Open my seam allowance. I love a good challenge. Oh, that's the gathering stitch from the other one. Okay. All right. Gathered up a little bit again. All right. I didn't actually notice where I'm using it more, if it's on the back facing or the front facing. It feels pretty um, evenly distributed, so. Sur yeah, what are surgeon sleeves? <laughs> Ones with working buttonholes. I don't know. A surgeon sleeve is one with bur bu working buttonhole. What does that mean? Like, where's the buttonhole? Aren't all buttonholes? Oh, surgeon cuffs. Ones with masks? I don't know. You guys teach me so much. <laughs> Oh, this, I didn't do a very good job putting this gathering seam on the seam allowance today. I'm going to have to take it out. That's okay. All right, let's line this up. You know, the only other thing I could think of was that you lined up the seam line to this edge, but that would have made it worse. Oh, okay. <laughs> Combo, exactly. I know, she's like our... Our sewing tech guru. All right, let's see here. I feel like I could probably stand a little bit more gathers on this back section here. Okay. 
You also want to be really close to that that um, stitch because there's no gathers right there. Oops, I'm pulling on the wrong one. Great. So smart. Okay, let's see. There, and also, um, if you have to do something like this, I definitely recommend doing it one half and then the other half. And I, I say that so that you get all of it evenly distributed because sometimes um, it's really easy to kind of cheat. You're like, oh, I could get it all in there if I just go a little past the center line and um, the center line, then you kind of, you know, get you give yourself less for the next half Ooh, am I gonna make it why is this oh I don't need as much what's going on here wait why is this so now I'm having to do the opposite wait a minute oh really I didn't know that I thought all suits had working buttonholes I should have marked the uh Shoulder line. Is that a tuck? No, it's not a tuck. Okay. I hate sewing on interfacing. It looks so ugly. <laughs> Makes your stitch, the sewing look so icky, you know? This feels so asymmetrical. I feel like this one has no. I may need to stop after this and just start investigating this and make sure I'm doing this right because this one has no gathers. Huh. You know what I mean? Something's up. Okay, and I stopped five eighths of an inch away like that. That looks okay. This is the top collar, by the way, so it's going to go like this. Can you start seeing the collar? Like this. See? It's feeling a little... Transylvania. <laughs> right, exactly. Terry was not settling for anything less than functioning. Wait, there's a Frankenstein joke. <laughs> the last slice cut. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, you guys cracked me up. Yeah, I would start a break. This is looking like a pea coat right now, isn't it? You can start seeing the um, collar though, right? See it there? It looks centered. It just didn't feel like it that last stretch, you know? Okay, I'm gonna, I was gonna do the last stitch, so if you're you know, sewing this coat and you wanna like go ahead, you, the next step is to sew this whole edge right here to the other collar edge, you know? And you're gonna, you know, now join this, you know, go straight through this so you don't lose your little, you don't have a hole right there. And then, um, then you hand stitch the, let's see, how is it? I think you tack the colors together or do you leave it open? How is it? Well, I'm gonna look at this and make sure I steer you guys correctly. Pin the facing along the front edge. Okay, well, yeah, I'm gonna look at this. I wanna make sure I have the right collar and the facing for the size, it's just because we had to ease that so bit much. 
and one side eats a little more than the other, which is weird. Oh, what a bummer, Eliza. Yeah. Oh, see, that's smart, Beverly. Yeah, you know what? I actually wear a couple of shirts where I've sewn the plackets down. And I just don't unbutton. I just pull it over my head. Because I don't like the gaping. And I don't want to worry about the gaping. And I feel like my my hand sewn buttonholes hand sewn meaning like the buttonholes I put on with my machine they no matter what even if I get a buttonhole that barely fits the button the buttons come undone and I don't understand why that is you know I need to investigate that oh it's a water oh yeah that, I was wondering that too Ray yeah so um, I still think this is coming along good. I'm gonna try it on again. Cause it's all top stitched now and I feel like it's gonna look better. Plus we have a collar. <laughs> we have an under collar. It very easily goes over my sweater. So you could make this in like a waterproof and then it would be like a overcoat. No. Got my big pockets. I'm so glad we top stitched it. All right. Here's my belt loop. It's a little cinch. The water. I like that expression. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll try not to mosey so much next time so we can finish it since we're into a part three right now. But, um, you know, slow sewing a coat is, I think it's a good process. And um, I don't know if anyone's making it, like that's watching the uploads, but then they could catch up as well. So, or get started. You can catch up really easily. I'm going such a nice pace. So, um, yeah, it is coming along, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would totally make this for myself. I have a really nice red coat that I wear, like, when I go to cold places and stuff. But, like, like when I have to go to a cold city. But I never get to wear it here. It would kind of look funny here. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, um, I think that's it today. I was gonna show you my my last pie slice I made, but where did I just put it? Oh, here it is. I, I made a cow pie. Do you get it? <laughs> so I had bandana, and I did denim. Um, and then I did, you know, the cow print. And my friend gave me the cow and the bandana. So, cow pie. <laughs> yeah, top stitching thumbs up. I totally agree. And I, I feel like it's worth it to do those kinds of de details on the coat. Yeah, cow pie. Yeah, and I know, the moon pie. I kind of wish the moon pie had a different crust. I didn't realize how much I'd be using that as a sample, but... Um, and I'll be sending out some patterns today. I, I'm gonna, I kind of, I really want to take out the um, video as a download and make it just a link to Vimeo, you know? So I'll clean that up. It'll, it'll send you a new updated pattern. So, so thanks you guys. Thanks um, for supporting me. It's awesome. I really want to keep doing this. I love doing this. I love sewing with you guys. All right. Well, um, I hope you guys don't have to do any last minute Halloween sewing. That is my wish for each and every one of you because it's the worst, even if you enjoy it, because your kid's like, I decided I don't wanna be that anymore and I wanna be something else. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to cup of coffee. In. It's the only kind of cow pie you'd want to eat, right? <laughs> yeah, the, I, I'm really liking the denim and the canvas ones the best. The, the pie is so crisp right here, you know? As opposed to the felt, which is a little soft, so... Well, have a great weekend. Um, I'll see you Wednesday for part three of this. Um, and I'm pretty sure we'll finish it, but I'm not going to guarantee it. Oh, that's awesome, Lisa. <laughs> you're wearing your re wearing penguin costumes. Um, I don't put weights in them, Eliza, but um, I do. This is one thing I just recently started doing. I put three pins on the bottom and um, it, it sits so much nicer. Like I, like when I don't have them, like this one doesn't have it, right? And so it does this, whereas this one doesn't really do that. It's just a little more stable, especially if I put the pin maybe right here. It just sits nicer, whereas this one's just a little, like it skitters more. It doesn't probably look different to you, but it definitely feels different to me because then when I put the pins in. Um, I put weight in the cupcake. And I just get um, pebbles and put the pebbles in there, a couple rocks. Just keep them at the bottom so that your pins aren't touching them, you know. Uh, I think a little piece of stiffener on the tip, if you have a really lightweight fabric, would be good. But this one I used denim and then I used a chambray on the underside. So it wouldn't be too hard to turn and it wasn't hard at all. It wasn't hard to sew at all. So... You can do pretty heavyweight fabric, and it's not too bad. It's just this little point you need to get turned. It's not bad. This one, look how wonky this thing is. <laughs> After all these years, it is so wonky. <laughs> I didn't really have my sewing technique refined yet. So, yeah. Oh, I'm glad. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it today. Yeah, the denim. I know. She was like, you could do... Um, she had some good ideas, and then when I was here, I was looking through all the wool I had, and I was like, what about denim? So, and I had some non-stretch denim. You could probably use stretch denim, but it might give you a problem, you know? I'm glad, Liz. I'm glad you could, too. I know it's hard to make them all. There's no pressure. So, um, have a great time at your Halloween party, Lisa. And um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. The weather's beautiful here. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but, you know, the weather's nice at least. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to look at my, um, yeah, see, so YouTube says that my stream is not doing very good. That's so funny. Like the quality of it, but it says good. I'm trying to remember to look at this more often. So, yeah, you're welcome, you guys. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you Wednesday. We'll sew part three of this. Um, thank you to Hearts for sponsoring us and sending us this project. This is really fun. We'll do more coats this winter as well. So, yeah. What did Walter say? He said, you too, Walter. Oh, yeah, you too, Walter. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. See you Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific. And um, if you have a time change, just remember we are not time changing our time quite yet. Not till November 3rd. So you might have to adjust what time you tune in. So yeah. Bye, Samia. Bye, Ray. Thanks for joining. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.